This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Sean Preston. Welcome, everybody, to the Good Neighbor Podcast. Today, we have a rock star neighbor on with us. That is my boy, Cody Peterson of CP Asphalt Ceiling. What's going on, man? Not too much, Sean. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You know, a couple days of rain. I'm, you know, in the seeding stages of gardening. I'm a big kind of gardening nerd when it comes to this kind of stuff. And uh, I'm excited for the sunshine whenever that's going to decide it wants to to pop out. And what absolutely blows my mind, just on a side note before we start, is taking a look at, I'd say four days ago, I'm going up to Sudbury on the weekend, up to a buddy's camp. We're going to do some fishing. We're going to do a bunch of fun stuff. And it said it was like eight degrees and overcast. And I'm thinking like, okay, do I even want to go? It's like four hours to drive there, all of this planning and buy all the food. And then yesterday I talked to him. He's like, yeah, it's going to be 20 degrees in the sun for like two days. And I'm like, thank you, Mother <laughs> Nature, for looking out for me. Yeah, the weather's so unpredictable. Yeah, We're all waiting cool. for the sunshine. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Okay, so why don't we dive into it? I'm sure the listeners are chomping at the bit here. And why don't you tell us a little bit about your business? Yeah, so my business is called CP Asphalt Ceiling. We pretty much handle everything to do with asphalt for commercial and residential spaces. So if you just need a driveway sealed, repaired, anything like that, we got you covered. If you have a parking lot, we do line striping, pothole repair, crack filling, pretty much everything to do with that. So I've never really kind of been in the asphalt world uh, very much, uh, but I want to kind of unpack it. So, okay, so a residential homeowner driveway, it sounds pretty straightforward. Is there anything else like that I really need to know? Like, what am I looking for? You know, maybe if I if I go out on my driveway, let's say, or if I've got a commercial spot, what am I looking for where that's going to kind of you know, light bulb moment in my brain that, you know, I might need to call you. So basically what you're going to be looking for is any texture of the pavement uh, completely drying out. You can see all the oils have leaked out. It's starting to crack. You'll That's whenever you develop potholes as well. So you'll be wanting to look over your driveway, parking lot, whatever it may be, and check out those spots because once it starts happening, it's just going to continue happening and it's going to end up costing you a lot more in the end compared to a very cost efficient way of sealing. And then you have protect it for two to five years. Okay. Yeah. Two to five years. What, what, where is it down? Is it the sun? Yeah. So it's the sun, all elements, traffic. It's pretty much uh, the asphalt itself has oils trapped in it. It's whenever those oils leak out and it becomes super dry. That's when you get the cracking and the potholes and everything else like that, along with just having a fresh black, driveway for your house or for your business it can really help to draw in customers i was pretty excited uh, for the longest time i'm 35 okay so i'm still young but you know i started getting into the world of business and the world of sales pretty young i was like maybe 20 21 when i got in and so i've always been the youngest person in the room and <laughs> recently starting to not which is, I mean, depends on how you look at that. Some people will look at that in a negative light. I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So I get excited about it because as much as I have an old soul and I really can relate to somebody 20 years older than me, I also love the young people as well too, especially the people who are in business uh, because I'd like to say we're cut from the same cloth from that aspect. And so uh, how old are you, man? Uh, I'm 24. Very, very cool. My next question is going to segue right into it. I want to know. I'm a curious cat. I'm sure other people are. What's your experience been like, your journey into doing what you're doing today? It's been honestly really good right from the start. And the feedback we got, especially because we're younger, it's just been phenomenal. Uh, any older person sees a younger person actually wanting to work. It just helps with getting the job done. And once they see a young person come in and do a great job, there they just want to stick with us every year okay so you got a partner oh uh, yeah me and my girlfriend had actually uh, started up this company together <laughs> oh that's so awesome yeah. really cool how did that like how how did that kind of come about so basically i had finished college i didn't really know what i wanted to do i was kind of half working with my parents just here and there getting just random side jobs stuff like that and then i was just researching different businesses to start that were cost efficient to start up 
and uh, ended up finding driveway ceiling. And at that point, I had a car and some other things, sold everything, put every last dollar I had into uh, the equipment and marketing and everything like that for it. And then just ha haven't looked back since. And the conversation you had with your girlfriend, what, what did that sound like when you guys were kind of putting this all together? Uh, she was on board right from the start. I wasn't even expecting her to want to do this with me. I thought it was just going to be kind of my own thing. But yeah. she was right from the start. She was very involved, wanting to get out there, do the work, as well as the uh, back end uh, marketing and website and everything like that. So it worked out really well. Congratulations, man. Half the battle is making the jump. Not a lot of people have got the, the stones to take the risk uh, mm -hmm. to, to do it. But the benefits are phenomenal uh working for yourself me i was bullied a lot I bullied in elementary school high school bullied in the workforce uh come from a family of entrepreneurs so i've always wanted to do it i finally got my opportunity something that was my calling and and i got to take that leap and uh, i would never go back yeah yeah it's it's nice i like it it's a lot of responsibility a lot of uh stress but it's worth it in the end yeah totally and what you put in you get out right exactly that's that's the main beneficial for me very cool. Uh, are there any myths or misconceptions when it comes to the world of asphalt ceiling? Yeah, there's a there's quite the amount of characters in it. A lot of people tend to shy away from it just because there are scams like with any business. But sometimes people just get more into it than not. And uh, just the type of sealer that different people use, like some people will be like cutting it a bit so that it's not a fresh product going on and it kind of puts out a bad name for everybody else that's doing it proper. Okay. So yeah, the importance, I mean, there's a lot of industry industries out there, you know, that I come across where uh, you can take construction, for example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anybody can pick up a hammer. Um, anybody can become a real estate agent. And I just recently came across some more stats that it's really a small percentage of the real estate agents or market that are actually, you know, selling the homes and <clears throat> not to say that they all aren't trusted, but, um, you know, there are the good ones and there are some people that uh, are not. And that's what we try to want to embody on the show is get the good ones on, let them tell uh, their story, um, you know, because everybody's got a bunch of different needs. And, and one day if we can educate somebody and they take a look now after listening to this and they maybe it's two years from now, they come across their driveway and say, that doesn't look the best. But I remember there was a guy and then maybe coming back to that and you get in the business. That's what gets me out of bed every single day. Okay. So being a young person, uh, it's nice to own a business. It's nice to work on and in it. Um, but I'm curious to ask you, uh, when you're not, and you're on your own time, what do you mm -hmm. like to do for fun? I love, uh, golfing. That's something I recently started doing two years ago and pretty much any free chance I get off work, I'm at the golf course. Very cool. I'm a big golf guy myself. Uh, I play in a league. They do it different than mm -hmm. just your regular golf. So it's pretty cool. They have a game set for every hole. So you play in a foursome and every we either nine or 12 groups, depending on what course that we play. And so you're playing against nine or 12 other teams. So it's more camaraderie playing in your foursome because you're not just playing against yourself. You're playing on a team. And what they do is they have different games. So one is like, a, they call it a Scottish and then count two. So everybody tees off, you take the best drive and then everybody plays their own ball from there and you take the two best scores. That's pretty cool. That's an interesting way to do it. And then another one would be like an Irish count three. So you have to take the second best drive and then everyone plays their ball and you have to count three. Hmm. That's um, interesting. Yeah. Lone Ranger is another cool one. So everybody drives, you take the two best drives. One guy goes alone and the other three play a scramble off the second ball count both scores. Hmm. And then you go all the way till you finish. And then, and they, they calculate it through the, you know, the entirety of the, um, of the Gulf season. And then they have four flights based because there's a lot of guys, right? And then uh, I know getting, cause it, there's a lot of, I guess, uh, luck in mm -hmm. how they calculate it. So it's pretty much open to anybody that can win. And my first year in the league last year, and I won the B flight. So oh, no way. That's pretty cool. cool. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Where would you say is your favorite course to play in Barry? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, I've golfed a lot. Um, I did a six years in the Shanty Bay League. Um, mm -hmm. I got the privilege of doing uh, Vesper Hills. I thought that was a pretty good uh, golf course. Um, and Tangle Creek is actually pretty good. Yeah, I like Tangle too. I'd have to say Settlers is probably, Settlers is my favorite. That's the one that I kind of started at and still keep going strong there. Nice. I know a couple of people who are in the league there. Um, really good golf course. Mm -hmm. So my parents used to live off of line, uh, Old Berry Road and line between line three and four. So if you take okay. line three, you literally shoot right out at Settlers Go. So it was around the corner from us when we lived there for like three, four years. That'd be ideal. Yeah. So we're definitely going to have to plan a mandate, get out on the golf course, uh, maybe have a couple beers, see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah, you know what? It's it's something I've really wanted to try to the last couple of years to really get in, like to be a good or get good at golf. Like you have to play a minimum of of, of two times a week, uh, just because all of that muscle memory that's in there. If you're not practicing it, then you lose it, and then that's where you know you start losing golf balls, or I like to call it <laughs> donating them to the woods. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, so so you get in with golf. What are some things you like to do with uh, with your girlfriend? You guys together? Oh, uh, well, we both golf together. We pretty much do everything together. If we're not golfing, we're dirt biking, hiking, playing with the dogs, just things like that. How'd you guys meet? Um, through a mutual friend. Yeah. And we all ended up hanging out. And then uh, me and her got in contact. And that was pretty much the story. How long have you guys been together now? Uh, this summer will be three years. You know, very cool. And you get to meet your your other person. I'm the same with mine. We do everything we play video games together we go camping together we golf together she comes and watches my hockey games we watch we're big leaf fans unfortunately <laughs> i just totally regret saying that because <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get a world of hurt tonight because they're not gonna make it into the second round oh, yeah, yeah, you both. yeah terrible absolutely terrible but i digress uh we'll, we'll move on from that so okay in in life cody we never we, we always put ourselves on, on a path that we try, uh, or we think is the right path for us based mm -hmm. off of our ambition, our goals, where we want to go, what we want to accomplish in life. And we don't get to control where we go, uh, as much because life will sometimes throw something in our way. And so we could be directed in a general area. And then all of a sudden you're taking a hard Larry uh, mm -hmm. for a little bit obviously the path you originally took, you need to get back on that path, or maybe there's an obstacle in the way you can't push forward uh, to keep going. And so we experience these, you know, challenges, these hardships uh, in life. And I wanted to ask you if you've ever experienced a, a life hardship or a challenge that you rose above and, and then, and, and also maybe did you find some silver linings from it as well? Yeah, especially just running a business, it's inevitable that you're going to run into just problem after problem, especially whenever you're first starting out and trying to figure it out. Like there's so many times, even um, last year, where we, I always put all the money I make back into the business, especially for the first few years of starting it up. So there's so many times I was going to a bigger job and put every last dollar I had, just enough gas in my tank and product to apply the sealer. And just heading out there hoping for the best and yeah it's always worked out pretty good for us yeah it's uh it's truly a a pretty crazy thing um with the the amount of risk that goes you know when you just go work for somebody it's you're you're you're, you're getting paid versus mm -hmm. you know, some of these things not a lot of people think about that right and yeah, uh, yeah. and what goes in behind the scenes to not only running a successful business but the up and downs and the life challenges that that come along with that yeah, it's definitely difficult, but the reward in the end makes it all worth it. You no, know, it's something that you can call yours, right? It's your baby and you made it and you get to be proud of it. And, and I'm sure that uh, uh, everybody in your inner circle is, uh, is, is very proud. It's a very rare thing to see somebody at your age, uh, you know, taking the plunge into being a business owner and really happy to have you on the show and really happy to be having this conversation together. Yeah, thanks, John. I appreciate that. 
So what's one thing that you wish our listeners knew about your business? Um, just that because we are younger doesn't mean it's going to affect the work of the job. More often than not, we're going to do better than seasoned professionals in the business just because we're taking that extra time and attention to detail that maybe experience, more experienced people would have overlooked and not uh, done for you. Wonderful. Um, listen, a phenomenal uh, conversation. Uh, really proud of you, man. Really happy to see what you're doing out there. Uh, big uh, supporter of you uh, already in the short amount of time we spent together. Um, thank you for coming on the show and doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sean. I appreciate it. No worries. We'll talk soon. Talk soon. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Mayhurst. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gmpmidhurst.com. That's gmpmidhurst.com. Or call 705-413-3775.